Wong the Great Turtle here, and this is an exciting day. Why? Because I got the granddaddy of filtration for turtle tanks. It's the best filter, in my opinion, that you can put on a turtle tank, like the one behind me. Can you guess what it is? I bet a lot of you can. I can't wait anymore. Let me tell you exactly what it is. Let me unbox it. Let's set it up. Bonus, stick around to the end of the video, and I'll tell you how I got this $350 filter for $140. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, the best turtle tank filter is the Fluval FX6. And there you have it. In Long Live Your Turtle's opinion, this is the best turtle tank filter that you can get for your indoor aquarium like the one behind me. This one's 75 gallons. That's excellent for a Fluval FX6 like this. You could even probably get up to 120 gallons before you think of what? Getting another one. Because all those other filters, those budget filters, they work, but they don't work as amazingly and as efficiently as this one. There's tons of filters out there. There's tons of different types. You got your canister filters like this bad boy here, but you also got your hang on the backs. You got your internal filters, and there's tons of different versions of those individually. So there can be a whole gambit of different filters to pick from. Which one for your turtle though? And here's the spark notes for this whole video. And it's a super easy decision. It's the Fluval FX6. This is the filter you want for your turtle tank. I'm not talking about ponds outside. I'm talking about tanks inside your house. This is the filter for you. No, I'm not sponsored by Fluval. I just love this filter so much that I really have to drive it home right now. You can turn the video off. You can go do what you need to if that's all you needed. But let's talk about why this filter is so good. All right, so in a second, I'm gonna unbox this so you can see what this filter is all about. But first, I wanna set some baselines. First of all, why do you need filtration for a turtle tank? So turtles, just like fish, or just like, you know, any human being like me, you, you eat things and those things are digested and the things that aren't required for your body, they turn into poop and pee. So turtles, like my red ear slider Moses here, spends a majority of her time in the water in the tank. So she pees and poops in the water, she lives in that water, that water needs to be really clean. And obviously dirty water is gonna cause illness to your turtle from a variety of different reasons. So how do you clean that water? Well, the best thing to do is get an awesome filtration unit. Our Fluval FX6 here is one of those. And just to really briefly mention it, the nitrogen cycle is a super important topic here. I'm not gonna go over it in this video. I definitely suggest looking up what the nitrogen cycle is. But understand the basics of it makes filtration make a lot more sense when you're setting everything up. But at a really high level, the turtle poop and pee turns into ammonia in your tank, and that ammonia needs to be converted into nitrite, and that nitrite needs to be converted into nitrates. And those nitrates are what build up in your tank, and they need to be removed by water changes. Now, what makes that ammonia nitrite nitrate happen? That is biological filtration in your filter. That's gonna be your ceramic rings, your centered glass, little balls, that stuff with surface area. And stuff with surface area is where beneficial bacteria, I'm sure you heard this before, if you've heard of anything about filters and the nitrogen cycle, that beneficial bacteria is what you need to break down that ammonia all the way to the nitrate stage. So with all that in mind, what makes a great filter? Well, you need some mechanical filtration, you need lots of room for biological filtration to do that nitrogen cycle like I just said, and you need a lot of flow rate. This is very, very important when it comes to a turtle too, because look how big a turtle is. That is a large, large animal compared to the fish you see in here, which are very standard size aquarium fish. So even like the Fluval FX6 here, it says up to 400 gallons. If you have a turtle tank that's 400 gallons, this does not apply to that. This is better to 75 to 120, I'd say. We'll get to that in a second. But just know this isn't a fish type filter conversation. We're talking about turtles in a turtle tank. So let's unbox this beauty and let's get everything out in the open so you can see what we're dealing with with the Fluval FX6. And let's talk about why this is an awesome filter. Let's get to it. All right, so I laid out all the external things for this filter. Uh, I'm just gonna go over things really quickly as we kind of go along here, and then we'll get to what's inside the filter in a second. All right, so first things first, you got a great manual. It actually talks about the Fugal FX4 too, which is just a smaller version of this one. You got a quick little pamphlet that's laminated that tells you how to do water changes and whatnot so that you don't forget how to use this filter after the many months that you can wait to clean it out because it's such a good filter. So first we got our hosing here and you would think hosing is just hosing for any filter. But for this filter, it's great because it's ribbed hosing and ribbed hosing, this is kind of like a rigid plastic. 
and it's basically impossible to kink. And that's great because you're trying to snake this around your tank. You don't want your filter tubing to kink at all because that will restrict flow and make whatever filter you have not work as well as it should. So they give it to you as one really big piece and you need to cut it into two pieces. You'll notice it has these rubber adapters at the end. Uh, you just need to make sure you don't cut it in a way that will not allow you to use these adapter pieces. Now, another amazing part of this filter, a lot of filters have kind of followed along with doing something like this, but I still like flu valves the best. It's these Aquastop valves. They're just super easy, open, closed. You can even change the rate of flow for your filter. So if it's too much, you can actually make it less. So it's really cool you have that much control over this filter. Don't get me wrong though, we got a turtle. This thing's going full throttle. Then you got these trim clips and these are really handy because they clip over the side of your tank. For a lot of other filters, let's say pen plaques, you just kind of get a curved, piece of plastic or tubing, uh, and then a couple suction cups that kind of hold it around the trim of your tank. But this basically snaps on to the side of your tank, so it's really hard to move the tubing from any of the destructive critters in the tank, hitting up against the intake and the output all the time. These hold it really well. So, so you'll see more what they do when they're installed, but these are really cool little feature. All right, we got our little output here. You see it has two outputs coming out of these cool little cones. And what's extra cool about this is it has like a spherical type joint here that lets you kind of aim that however you want. So if you don't want to blast it in a certain part of your tank, you can just move it over a little bit. And you got two of them so you can spread it across your tank. Now this is the kind of stuff you just don't see on those budget filters. And then we, of course we have our intake. And another awesome thing, it telescopes. Like this filter just gets better and better. It's got a huge strainer on the bottom. And yeah, this telescope is great because tanks have all sorts of sizes and you don't want this to be a rigid long piece because then it might not fit in a 75 gallon. Uh, but when you can telescope it like that, you got a lot more flexibility. Got some suction cups, big suction cups, by the way, which is important with a turtle. Uh, and then this is just a tubing that lets you do water changes and drain the tank out out of your filter, which is kind of interesting, but I've never actually used these. Now you're probably like, this guy just got this filter. What kind of credentials does he have using it? And this is actually my second Fluval FX6, which is why I'm so excited because I know so much about it and I know how awesome it is. I've been using a Fluval FX6 for probably six years now. I've used it on this 75 gallon aquarium right here with three turtles in it. Since a couple of years ago, I've separated them. So now I'm using it downstairs on a hundred gallon indoor pond. So it's got some versatility and it's still going strong after all these years. Such a good filter. And he's got a couple of clamps and suction cups uh, for some miscellaneous installation. Let's take a look at what's inside the filter. All right, so around the top of the filter, you got these little screw clamps, and these are fantastic for ensuring that that O-ring keeps this canister filter sealed. It's pressurized, so leaking will be a huge issue if that were to ever happen. That's true for all canister filters. They're under your tank, they're pressurized, and they will cause major leak issues if they do leak. But this basically ensures that that will never happen. So you can just pry these open, and you can just take the top off. You'll notice this tube is already glued in there and this is part of your intake. So that's gonna go to the bottom of your filter. Big warning there. All right, so now you can look inside of it. First thing you see is some mechanical filtration. Let's pull out the entire media baskets. And again, if you've never seen this filter before, it's pretty nifty. Boom. That's how easy it was to take out all of the media baskets. Look down at the bottom, you got a little design there. And this is a cool design because when the water goes down this in tube all the way to the bottom, the kind of spiral shape on the bottom here makes the water spiral around in the actual filter itself. And that's gonna be important in a second and we'll get to that in a second. But you also see there's a tube. This is permanently installed as well. And that goes down to our giant pump here. And this pump is actually pretty efficient, only 43 watts, that's really good when you compare it to other filters and this thing's humongous. So it's a really efficient filter for how big it is and how powerful it is. Right down here is a little drain. I've actually never used this before. It has a little valve and um, you can actually do wire changes with this, but it's a cool feature if you need it. Let's move on. All right, so here's our media baskets. You'll see that there are one, two, three really big baskets here that can hold a lot of media. You'll notice these little handles here. They're basically these plastic rods that help hold everything together. So when you're cleaning this filter, you can just pull this all out and clean everything out, replace anything you need to, and then just drop it back in the filter. So, so easy. But to separate the baskets, all you have to do is pull that apart. This is what they look like. So looking at the first basket here, you'll see we have 
a foam ring around the outside. It's actually two pieces. And then in the inside, we actually have this biofoam. So the biofoam is supposed to be a biological and mechanical filtration. This out here is coarse foam, and that's just supposed to be your mechanical filtration. And then there's these little red trays on the inside, so it's double tray. And again, you have another one of those biofoams. And while I have you here, when we actually set this filter up, I'm actually gonna modify it a little bit so that's a little more biological media heavy to really take care of turtle waste management in your tank water more than it is right now. And again, I have a Fluva FX6 downstairs on my 100 gallon pond. So at least for me, I know what the best balance of biological media is. But if you wanna see that, stick around and we'll get to that. So that's our first tray. Our second tray, again, we have this coarse foam around the perimeter of our inside trays. And now we have a bag of Biomax ceramic rings. That's your biological media. And then again, you have another bag of that on the next level down below that middle tray. And down to the third and lowest tray, you again have a perimeter of that coarse foam. And then you got this little mesh baggie that they provide here. And this is excellent if you wanna put your own filtration like carbon in here. These bags are perfect for that and they're super reusable, which is excellent. That way you don't have your carbon little pieces just hanging around everywhere. And then the bottom here, we have a carbon pad. So this has a carbon infused into it and not totally necessary to have carbon in your filtration cycle, but it can be beneficial. All right, so I talked about everything at a kind of high level. Why is the Fluval FX so good in my opinion, Long Longer Turtle's opinion? Well, first and foremost, it's the flow rate of this filter. This big pump here pumps out 925 gallons per hour. And it's really important you have that high flow rate because you have a dirty turtle and you need all that water to be going over that beneficial bacteria and through that mechanical filtration to get that waste out of your turtle's living space. So it's very basic. You're just putting more water over your filter media so that your filter media has more of a chance to filter out anything bad in the water. So my rule of thumb and a very general rule of thumb is that your filter should be turning over six to eight times the volume of water in your turtle tank. Now this is a 75 gallon aquarium. That's gonna amount to math, math, math. So that's gonna be 900 gallons per hour for this 75 gallon aquarium. So this filter is just meeting that at 925. I know the rated flow is less than the flow with filter media, but I use this rule of thumb for the rated flow for all my filters and the six to eight times holds true for the rated amount, not the amount specifically with media in it, which is gonna probably knock it down to five to 600 gallons per hour. The next and probably equally most important feature of a filter should be its volume of filter media that it can hold. This is a large filter, as you can see. And in my opinion, it's probably the biggest filter I've seen for internal tanks. Yeah, maybe I'm just ignorant, but this is a large filter. And that is awesome because I just went through all of the mechanical filtration this thing can hold, it has all those middle trays for all that biological filtration this thing can hold. It's got a lot of volume, especially for that flow rate. So this filter is basically a little tank under your tank. Now the big negative to this filter, and it's gonna be a hit on a lot of people, and that is price. This retails at $350. That is outside of so many people's budgets. I really understand that. And I mentioned in the beginning of this video to stick around till the end. We're not to the end yet, but I wanna mention it again. I got this for $140 and I'll tell you how I did that. And I think it's possible to do it again, but yeah, as long as you're patient, there's ways to get this for much cheaper than that $350 price tag. But even at $350, I wanna emphasize, if you can dish that money out, this is totally worth it. But it really just comes down to time versus money. So at least in my opinion, that equals out very fast when you're using a really high power filter like this versus those other canister filters. I'm thinking Penplax, Polo Aurora, the Sun Suns, uh, Turtle Cleans. Those all require more maintenance than something like this. You probably need more than one unit just to match this one. And that's just double the workload for something that already needs more workload. If you can see where I'm going with this, this is an amazing investment, even at that $350 price tag. And again, no, I'm not sponsored by Fluval. I just love this filter so much. All right, we made this far, that's incredible. Once again, I wanna make a five minute video. This is probably gonna be like 20 minutes. I apologize for that. I'm going to set this filter up how I want it. I'm basically going to be putting more biological filtration in it. And I'm gonna be using that biological filtration from my current Pull Aurora and Penplax because I have Biomax rings in there and I have Sinter glass. I don't wanna lose those. I'm gonna put them in here so this filter is even more pimped out and even better than its greatness right out of the box. All right, first thing you wanna do is rinse everything out. They're right from the factory, so they still got that chemical smell to them. Give everything a nice rinse and you'll be good to go. Remember, you got that plastic bags here. 
take care of those like I didn't. Alas. Let me deactivate those other filters. So sorry, filters. Rip out their insides, that great biological filtration that currently has excellent living biological bacteria. Basically instantly cycling this filter and one second. All right, top tray of my Pull Aurora. I have this center glass and this is an expensive but really awesome biological media. I forgot to mention the flow direction of our filter. Before our flu valve here, the water goes into the bottom of the filter and then comes up in a swirling pattern around these outside coarse sponges. And then when it gets to the top, it comes over and then right down the middle through all those middle trays. So you're gonna want all your mechanical filtration on the first stages, which it is on these coarse sponges on the outside. And then you're gonna want all your biological in the middle. But let's start with what we're gonna do with the centered glass. I'm gonna put this on the bottom of our Fluval FX6 because it's kind of small. So I wanna make sure that the water hitting this is at the end of our cycle through our filter. That way, the bigger stuff, like those ceramic rings, can kind of pick up the big pieces of waste that our mechanical didn't pick up, so it doesn't clog everything. All right, so that fit tons of that media in there, and that's gonna be just so excellent. There's so much surface area just in that first level that I modified for this filter. All right, so that second stage, we have some biological filtration. I'm actually just gonna put a little bit more. These are bio rings. And our final one, so we have those two biological slash mechanical sponges. I'm gonna leave this for now. Once these kind of deteriorate into nothing, I'm actually going to replace this one here, that second one, with just these ceramic rings because they basically last forever. These are meant to be so cruddy that I'm gonna have to throw them out, but I don't wanna buy new ones. I just don't think that's very sustainable. These ceramic rings really are. And then I'll probably put something like a filter floss uh, on this top one, just to keep that, a little bit more of that fine filtration at the top. But that's it, that's gonna be my media setup for my Fluval FX6. All right, don't forget your little handles here. You make it really easy to move your baskets. Just make sure it settles down. Right now it's too high up, and this will not let you close the top of it. There you go, everything's settled down much better now. Also make sure that you didn't stack up too much extra media in your filter if you did what I did. Um, so because you basically don't want any sort of gaps between trays. Now, before putting this under my tank stand, I wanna fill it up a little bit with water. The manual suggests two gallons, so we'll do that. And that just helps with the priming of the system. So I'm gonna put two gallons in a second. But first I wanna show you this part. So you got these awesome push clamps here. So you can just push this on. It's got its own O-rings in it to help seal it from leaking and those can Take a little back and forth and a little pushing, but there you go. Now you're ready to attach that tubing at the end. Now, don't cut your tubing until you've installed your filter so you know how long it needs to be once you have all the intakes and the output in the right spot. Then you measure how long your tubing needs to be. Not before, don't do it right now. All right, make sure when you orient it underneath your tank, the out and in are where you want to put the input and output on your tank. Kind of doing a crisscross pattern to get even pressure on that o-ring so there's no possibility of leaking all right for this it is quite a push it's gonna feel like you're breaking it boom i gotta secure that is you got these little clips that'll help hold your rib tubing on this side, next to the beautiful Turtle Basker 2000, shamelessly promoting my own product. Got another clip. Put this one as close to the wall as possible. Now if it fits, I'm gonna put the intake on this side. And remember it's telescoped, so you got a little bit of adjustment possibility. I just wanna make sure everything fits here. I'm actually gonna put it up probably against the side wall here. All right, we got our tubing here. I know that this is too long if I cut it in half for both of them. So I'm gonna cut it right in half, make it easier to work with. Otherwise, if you have a tricky situation where you need some long tubing and you can't miss an inch, definitely do some math here to make sure that everything that you cut is not too short because you can't gain back tubing, but you can always cut more of it. I almost forgot they have these little suction cups that go on the bottom of your filter to kind of minimize vibrations from your filter and I guess hold it down. Don't be like me and definitely do this before you put water in it and set your filter up completely. All right, like I said, never overcut. 
I'm gonna use these PVC cutters that I have handy, but just a nice pair of sharp scissors or utility knife. Just make sure it's a clean cut. All right, so once you have a tube, install it on your filter on that valve on the bottom, and then you're gonna snake it around to that part on the top. All right, so like I said, you're gonna put your tube right here. One thing to remember is to put on your little screw clamp here. That's a flathead screwdriver. Open this up, put it over the end of the tube, and then you're gonna slide it all on. I'll show you what that looks like in the end. All right, hand tighten this, not too much. It's all plastic you're working with here. And I just bolt it really tight onto the nozzle here. I like to keep everything in the locked position so that no water will start siphoning out while I'm setting this up, just in case. Now you're gonna snake this side of the tube up to where you're gonna put your intake or output, depending on what you're working on right now. I'm working on the output. All right, now it's time to snake it around where you have that clamp on the side of your tank. So this is very stiff tubing, so you just need to have these clips ready while you're installing it. Get it right underneath there. Take your first clip and you're just gonna snap it on these little bracket side pieces here where there's slots. There you go. Last but not least. There you go. So a quick look at that. Installed, looks great. Couple inches in the water there. All right, so now for the grand finale. The next thing you're gonna do before you plug anything in, remember we had those valves in the off setting, so you're just gonna turn those all the way on. Both of them. Oh, shush. And with that all open, it's time to plug her in. Make sure you didn't get too much water on this. Jeez. Try that off real quick. All right, let's plug it in. Hey, there. Whole lot of wire movement. Now, the scary part for a lot of the first time Fluval FX6 users is this thing does a lot of self-priming, self-automated things, and a lot of noises and a lot of bubbles. It's basically just purging all the air out of the filter. Um, this is an automated setup, and it makes it so you don't have to prime it yourself where you're like pumping something or trying to blow into something. I don't even know. Some of the filters are just whole pain. This is not, this is self-primed, this is awesome. Let it do its thing, it's gonna turn off, it's gonna turn on, and that's it. This filter is now doing what it needs to be doing, and I'm not seeing any issues. Always check that your tubing and everything is secure after you've turned everything on. Make sure nothing's leaking around your seals. And that's it, flu valve set up. All right, so as promised, I told you I would give you the secret to getting the flu valve FX6 that retails for $350 for $140. So how I did it was I downloaded the PetSmart app and there's this Treat Trails game where there's an easy, medium, and hard. It's kind of like a Candy Crush type game. Um, the hard level is kind of hard, but once you beat all three levels, each level gives you a certain discount. I think the first one's 15% off a single item. The second one is a 20% off a single item coupon. And the third one's a 25% off coupon. And you think that all of those have to be used separately, and I think that might be the rule. However, if you find the right PetSmart and the right associate, They'll just combine all those coupons together. So that's 60% off right there if you can get an associate to add all those together for you. And the second thing you need is your PetSmart needs to be offering a deal on the Fluval FX6 already. So mine was already discounted at $270, and then they gave me an extra 60% off to a grand total with tax, $140 for a $350 filter. I am definitely not gonna promise that it'll work for any PetSmart, and I think I got really lucky and I got a really nice associate but it's definitely worth a try. Getting those coupons was just playing a game that you probably play a similar one on your phone anyway, and then just waiting and being patient for that discount at the store, and you can get a really top of the line Fluval FX6 for the same price as a budget canister filter like a Penplax or a Polo Aurora or a Sun Sun that actually has less flow rate. Um, you can get it for the same price as long as you are patient and you kind of work the coupons a little bit. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions on this filter, how to set it up, put them in the comments. If you liked this video, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you like to see DIY videos on turtle tank setups like the one you see here. I actually sell the Turtle Basket 2000 right here on Etsy. It's not always available when it is. Snag that up if you need an above tank basking platform. Thanks for watching and long live your turtle.